though again it's cliff here from down under. Um, so the access enclosure is all finished. I'm trying to think of a name for it to identify it. I think a good name would be the Hallmark Access Enclosure because it's got really good access. Um, I'm going to run a first little job on it now. Some parts, some stainless steel fasteners and um, it'll be a good test of how coolant proof it is and we'll also be christening it with coolant. Cheers. Alright, well the first job on the new access enclosure um, it's uh, some special fasteners for a client and I need to machine some hexagons these are stainless steel fasteners, I need to machine some hexagons on the top uh, so I've put a mandrel in my vise and uh, screwed one of the parts in the top and uh, put my Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probe in position so I can set the work offset um, or if you like the spindle center line to the part center line. Um, it's a good idea to have your pulley with a mark on the front because there's quite quite serious errors in a lot of these low cost CNC's in the uh, R8 spindle and the TTS system and if you orientate it the same way each time and your probe is oriented Tated with the, for example, the engraving on the front and the gland on the side, um, then you can uh, compensate for those areas errors when you set it up initially. Okay, so we go to the Path Pilot probe page and uh, find circular boss or center, and uh, set tool 99 in place. Um, put about a thousand millimeters a minute feed rate on. And so it does a little probing routine to establish the diameter, does the maths, and then zooms around the outside and sets the work offsets at DROXY0. Let's just run that now. It's X, Y, zero set. All right, well, just for interest, let's just go to X, Y, zero. So in the uh, MDI, we've just entered G, O, X, zero, Y, zero. Now we're over zero, and the DROs are on zero. And I've just, re I just repeated the same procedure on G, five, four, and G, five, five. So we're currently on G, five, four. G55, we're X0, Y0. Now let's change over to G54, and you can see here the discrepancy. So this is checking repeatability. It's checking the probe's ability to find the same position, and it's also checking the, uh, a combination of uh, different factors, the machine accuracy, uh, the software function, um, and the probe function. And uh, between Shifting between one probing routine on G54 and one on G55. Um, just going through this again. Uh, if I go G55, that was the last probing routine. We have X0, Y0. If I go G54, that's the one it was before that. It's three microns out in the X and one micron out in the Y. That is. Uh, a tiny amount obviously for a, um, a machine of, of this caliber. It's uh, around about a tenth of a thou in one direction and half a tenth of a thou in the other direction. So that's really good. So that was the XY set. Now let's set the Z. So we just jog above the work like so and then go to the probe page here, set probe Z, set work origin. And that's set the Z. So now we have 
X, Y, and Z set. I'm using an 8mm carbide tool and I'm just measuring the length here with my El Cheapo height gauge uh, made out of a 300mm uh, or 12 inch El Cheapo digital vernier. I haven't upgraded it because it just seems to do the job okay. So that's 76.11 effective length and so we just enter that into the tool table here, tool number 1, 76.11. Alright, well let's run apart. Um, it's stainless steel and uh, it's only held in fairly lightly with a little cap screw. So I'm not going to be taking big cuts, I'll set it very gently. It looks fine. All good so far. A nice simple job to start off christening the new access enclosure. Right, well let's really test this enclosure. I've got a high flow large pump and I've cranked up the uh, volume on the taps and let's run another part with it set on high. Woohoo! Spraying everywhere. Got the cover down on the electrical cabinet. No, it looks good. At that sort of flow rate, it's almost getting up over the top, but not quite. Some of you might be thinking, well, you haven't got a ceiling or a roof on your enclosure, so you're going to get a few drops throwing over the top and a few chips flying in the air. And that's true. Um, but, you know, I think that a sort of 99% effectiveness is enough. Um, in, the reali in reality, I've found over the years that it's virtually impossible 
to stop the odd drop of coolant from getting on the floor or the odd uh, piece of swarf, what you really want to achieve is, is blocking out the bulk of it. Um, it is a workshop environment and you know I haven't worried about that last 1%. Um, but yeah, it, this, this is performing really well, this enclosure. Seems to be really good. Can't see any finding its way through. Floor's pretty dry. I mean, sure, if I had a ceiling on it, I could completely control it, but, you know, it's a workshop. It's not a laboratory, so I'm happy with the odd drop that flies over the top. I would have liked to have run these stainless fasteners entirely via CNC and done the turning part on rapid turn. But I know from my tests of rapid turn um, that this thread is just too big for it. It hasn't got the power and it'll uh, end up by uh, getting out of pitch. If you haven't seen my series on rapid turn, have a look on my YouTube channel Thread Express. And you can see I've done a, uh, one of the videos is called Threading. Um, and I did a series of tests and I came to the conclusion that for steel or stainless steel, half inch or 12 millimeters is about as big as I feel comfortable going. And this is three quarter inch NF, so I had to machine it manually uh, because it's a one-op turning job. It could have been uh, turned and then cut in and then uh, thread milled and so on, but then that would have been two ops. So, so um, I need a bigger CNC lathe. All right, thanks for watching.